There you go. Today I'll be reading 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 35 through 38. But someone may, oh, and then 42 through 50, sorry. But someone may ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body will they come? How foolish, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. When you sow, you do not, you do not plant the body that will be, but just a seed, perhaps of wheat or of something else. But God gives it a body as he has determined, and to each kind of seed he gives its own body. 42. So will it be that with the resurrection of the dead, the body that is sown is perishable. It is raised imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. So it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam, a life-giving spirit. The spiritual did not come first, but the natural. And after that, the spiritual. The first man was of the dust of the earth, the second man from heaven. As was the earthly man, so are those who are, are of the earth. And as is the man from heaven, so also are those who are from, of heaven. And just as we have borne the likeness of the earthly man, so shall we bear the likeness of the man from heaven. I declare to you, brothers, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. This is the word of God, the people of God, and of God say, thanks be to God. You may be seated. We are nearly at the end of our Love Never Ends series. We have journeyed over the past six weeks looking at um, the lectionary passages that really speak into what it means to be the body of Christ. We dealt with what 1 Corinthians, where Paul is talking about what it means to be the body and how we live as the body of Christ. And we then we walked into how we use our spiritual gifts. And last week about what it really means to be resurrected in Christ. Today, in this passage, what Paul is trying to talk about is transformation. While he talks about in answering practical questions about what it means to that, what it might mean to go from this body of physical stuff to whatever it is God has for us in the next life, all wanted more, wanted them most to understand that it is about transformation. And you know what? There have been many things that have happened throughout our history that have changed all people groups, whether it was the invention of the wheel to bring a horse and buggy or perhaps the light bulb to harness electricity and produce light. Those things changed practical ways of living. And then we have the computer and the internet, which may have changed uh, sometimes to the best and sometimes not so much. But that has made us so much more connected and somewhat isolated, all at the same time. There have been many transformations in different societies, whether it was horrific events that took place that caused change or good things. But there has been nothing more transformational in all of humanity than the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And in our passage this morning, while Paul tries to explain the resurrection of the body, he wants us more than anything to understand the power of the resurrection in our lives, which brings transformation. The resurrection brought transformation power to the early Christians. Remember when the, that moment takes place, they are quietly waiting, hiding actually, anticipating the Roman guard to come. And yet what happens? The women return and say, ah, he's not there. We've been there and he's not there. He is risen. And so it is from that point that they 
live in anticipation of seeing Christ resurrected. And it is in that power that they live today. And Paul calls us to live in that too. In Philippians 3, 10 and 11, he says, I want to know Christ, yes, the power of his resurrection and participate in his suffering, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow attaining the resurrection from the dead. So it is important that we believe in our own resurrection, regardless of what we may think it looks like, that we will not live normal like everyone else when we encounter the living God. It changes us. There is a transformation that takes place in our lives that is like nothing else. And because we believe in the resurrection, there was transformation that took place in the, in the life of the people. When the Holy Spirit moves through the, through the congregation at Pentecost, there was power. Peter spoke boldly where he had hidden himself before. There is power in the Holy Spirit. And we live not as people who have a dead faith. We don't worship a dead God. We worship the King of kings and Lord of lords. Romans 8, 11 says, And the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you. So we must stop living as though we have nothing to offer the world around us. You see, if we truly believe in the power of the resurrection, we will stop living life defeated as though this is all there is. Because we know that it isn't when we be, surrender our lives to God and begin him, to allow him to transform our lives. Because we know that Christ's love changes us. It empowers us to impact the world we live in and those that we have the privilege of God bringing into our sphere of influence. When we surrender our lives to Christ and live as surrendered lives, we not only transform ourselves, but just as the early church transformed all of humanity in their time, we can transform the community around us. You know, it's quite interesting that for the first few centuries, about 300 centuries of the church, it was persecuted and it thrived. For the last 1,700 years or so, since it became legal as a faith, it's had some ebb and flow but mostly in America today, because we have enmeshed biblical principles into the life of the world's community, we have been in decline. You know, the scriptures, Paul himself said that we are resident aliens. This is not our home. We are just a passing through. And we are called to live in this world as fellow journer, journeyers with Christ and work to bring God's kingdom here. When we pray the prayer of the disciples, pray what? Your kingdom come, your will be done. We must live in that prayer, acting it out in our lives so that the community around us sees that Christ can bring true transformation, not only in our bodies, but in our lives. You see, the resurrection brought about the transformation of the cross. Prior to Jesus' resurrection, the cross was truly a horrific form of execution. Today, I have one on today. We wear it as a beautiful sign of hope for the world. It is no longer seen as this horrible thing because, not for any other reason other than the resurrection of Jesus Christ made it so. Beauty from ashes. All around the world, the cross 
is now a symbol of hope. This also means that because of the resurrection, we have transformed death. Death is no longer seen as the end of it all, especially for believers. But we know that there is something yet to come. This life is just a temporary thing. And when those who we know have died in Christ, we do not mourn as those without hope. But what? We mourn, we mourn for the, their, the fact that they are not with us. But because we know we will see them again, we celebrate their opportunity to be face to face with Christ already. We rejoice because death does not have the last word. And at Paul speaking about the resurrection of the body was trying to help them to understand that in this body, there is weakness and death and all of the imperfection. But in a resurrected body, as well as in a life transformed by Jesus Christ, we have wholeness in Christ. And we too can live knowing that death has no power. And finally, this transformation is a transformation of life. When we ask Christ to forgive us and we become Christ followers, we live transformed lives daily. Some days better than others, right? And the resurrection transforms our understanding of how we relate to one another and how we relate to society in general. The resurrection transforms our understanding and gives us the opportunity to recognize that the short amount of time that we are given here on earth is to be a time that we bring about God's kingdom here. We show others the transforming power of God by loving well. We are not to sit along the sidelines and wait for Christ's return, say, I'm saved, I'm good, God is good, we're all done. We are to bring the wholeness of Christ into our communities so that we might help transform this world for Christ. In the power of the Holy Spirit, when we focus our mind on Christ, study his word, and serve our community with the gifts he has given us, we are transformed into his likeness. And we can bring the peace and the wholeness that our communities need. In the power of the Holy Spirit, we can be change agents to those that we are in relationship with. The love that never ends that is mentioned in 1 Corinthians 13 that we've talked about already. It really is about our own discipleship, about our allowing God's priorities to become our priorities and allowing the hope of Christ to transform. So now I'm going to challenge you. I challenge you today because we, as members of this community of faith, have the opportunity to be with one another whether it is, as I asked earlier, to take the time to share and be with another who is struggling or to do things corporately as a group. On April 30th, we will have what we're going to be calling Sent Out Saturday, and we will be doing that once a quarter. And the whole church has the opportunity to come together and do work in our communities and be the face of Christ to those around us. I'm not sure what it looks like yet for, for April 30th, but I am sure that when we come together as the body of Christ, loving one another well, we can see the love of Christ just blossom in our communities. So I challenge you, when the date comes up somewhere, mark it on your calendar and be ready to serve, because we are not called to sit on the sidelines and wait for his return. We are called to be intentional about being in relationship with those who yet have yet to experience the love of Christ. This life is temporary, and we want to take as many with us home as we can. 
So let's be the face of Christ, the hands, the feet, the heart of Christ to the world. Amen. Will you pray with me? Almighty God, as we come before you, open our hearts and minds to your will. Help us to live as transformed people, ready to be your light and love to those around us. In Jesus' name, amen.